right, Mitch McKay, dude, you're a, a young powerhouse in the insurance business, but I don't think anyone is ever born thinking that's what I want to do. So what the hell happened? How did you get into this line of work? Well, I actually was interested in it at a ridiculously young age. Really? Four, you fucking unicorn. Yeah, 14, 13, I was learning about lifetime settlements. Uh, my, my uncle had a lifetime settlements business, and I just remember being re extremely interested in it from that age. And I got into health insurance at around 18 years old, like right when I could get the get license. A license. Uh, Start off with the old temporary license back then and then get the full one or you just went right in? I just went right, right in. in. Yeah. Yeah. And um, the the motivating factor initially was just to earn a living, just to make money. I kind of fell into the life insurance from the supplemental dental uh, um ancillary products alongside health insurance to health so insurance. So tacking on life insurance to the health policy or yeah. in, in the same sale. Yep. And uh, yeah, I almost feel like it was destiny in a sense for me to broker life insurance products. Like, wow. Yeah. It, I have it, never heard anybody say that. It, it really feels that way. Like it just, it, I feel drawn to it. I've always been fascinated with how it even works to begin with, like how they can afford to cover you for a million dollars when you're paying them a hundred dollars a month. And, um, similarly to what you were just talking about with the banking industry, I've, I've always been fascinated with that as well, but I've been more fascinated with how insurance works, especially life insurance, because it's, you know, in my opinion, the most important form of insurance that you could have. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, so the, the motivation of being financial initially, it, it can't still be your motivation, right. can it? Because yeah. I feel like that call, people burn out if it, right. it's all chasing the dollar, right? right? So what is it today? Like, what keeps you in it? My why yeah. is definitely my family and being able to, you know, in order to have the quality of life with my family that I want, that I think my family deserves... I have to earn a certain amount of money and let alone the money. Um, it's the, the sales pro I think a big part of this job is the, the data you're calling, like the leads you're getting and then how, how that combines with the, um, with the sales process. Mm -hmm. Right. So like if you're genuinely helping people, if you're coming across, in my situation, I'm usually coming across people who I'm, they recently signed up for something where I can find them a better deal. You know, that it feels good. They were going to pay for the other product that was inferior to what I'm now telling them about. So, you know, th that's my why too. Like I meet these people, I make these connections with these customers and I genuinely care about them. And, you know, I know that I'm helping them by placing getting finding mm. them the best deal that i can find yeah. genuinely getting them the best deal that i can get them living benefits is a huge part of that you come across somebody who bought a life insurance policy who uh that doesn't have any kind of living benefit any kind of critical illness benefit at all and they, they're they're paying oftentimes more money for the same type of policy where they could have full critical illness benefits imagine if you got diagnosed with cancer and you could have had the three hundred thousand dollars and instead, now you got the terminal illness built in where they got to be telling you that you're going to die within the next year mm -hmm. uh, in order to get half of it. Mm -hmm. you know? So it, educating people and most people probably don't even know that, right? right. That, that even exists. Right. So you went from uh, pay the bills to now the motivation, if I heard you, is financial. We talk about financial freedom, which right. is not just the paycheck, but being able to have enough time in your yeah. day you're not grinding 80 hours anymore right yeah. you know what i'm saying but your your income keeps growing but you have enough time to do something with it right exactly uh, yeah. that partnered with actually educating people and, and helping people yeah so i mean you're kind of a unicorn but if if somebody looks at it and says i want to kind of i want to do what mitch did now i, I haven't been dreaming about it since 14 but right. I want to be in mitch's shoes what's is there a first step like could you identify like all right if you're if you're going to do this this is the very first thing you have to do. You got to figure out how you're going to do it, which involves where you're going to get the leads and who you're going to talk to. Exactly. Yeah. 
So who were your first people? Were they purchase leads? Were they uh, centers of influence? Like, who I were th- your first people? I think the easiest way I worked for someone okay. that taught me how to do it. So I think that you know, starting trying to start out on your own uh, without any kind of support, without any kind of guidance, you're you're destined for failure. Mm. It's not gonna it's not gonna end well if you uh, don't have structure. You don't have an actual game plan. Mm. You know, you, you gotta you gotta work for someone else first. It's I, a big I did fucking it for, ocean. Right. Like you could drown. Yeah. Yeah. I did it for a very temporary period of time. I was 18, turning 19, and I only I did it for less than a year. Mm. But you know, um, top producer at that company, and I actually prematurely went out on my own and mm. did it on my own, and which is a good thing and a bad thing. I was so young. I think it's good. I kind of got it over with. Um, but I underestimated how much harder it was going to be going out on my own doing this, getting the contracts directly with the carriers, getting the leads myself, all of that in comparison to just sitting as a salesperson on a dialer and having them take care of everything. Yeah. In other words, there's, there's no blue pill. There's no right. red pill. Like, you aren't going to wake up tomorrow. It's ridiculous. The, the level, the bar to get into insurance and even financial advising actually is criminally low. Like, right. it's ridiculously low. You got to spend whatever, 100 bucks and go, you know, 90 days of study. And then all of a sudden you're a financial, financial professional. Advisor, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's bizarre, but... It, that's not it. I mean, that's we see 50 percent turnover, right? Like people get in and they get out. And it's because of what you said. They're not they want that blue pill. Like, All right, I'm going to get the test and I'm just going to start making bucks. But it isn't that yeah. it's you're going to grind for a bit. Right. right? Kind of like any small business. You're going to grind. Yep. And eventually you may not have to grind as hard. But if you get into this business, I mean, I think a lot of people are going to listen to this and go, he's young. He's got a family. He's, ma- he's got all the time he needs and he's making bank. Right. I want to do that. And it isn't that easy. It's it's definitely not that easy. It's I mean, it's like how this the saying goes, the overnight success took twenty years. It's that's that's real. Especially in this industry. Yeah. It's competitive, it's saturated. You're going up against the best of the best. If you're you know, whether you're reaching out to uh a kind of a lower demographic, more uh lower class people, even middle class people, or some of some of these guys are, you know, working with clients who have tens of millions, hundreds of millions of dollars in assets, billions of dollars in assets. Like you're competing against the best in the world when you're talking to those people. So and and you, I mean, it, being a life insurance agent nowadays is almost like a car salesman. Like if I want to shut down a convo mm-hmm. and someone says, "What do you do?" and I don't want to talk to that person, I say, "Well, I sell life insurance." Yeah, because they they will fucking run for the hills. So, I mean, the odds are stacked against you. This is not an industry to take lightly, right, right. if you want to succeed. Mm-hmm. Is there something that, um, that you do or don't do during the day? Like, what, what makes a successful day? Is it a, is it a routine? Is it, I, I always do at least this thing, or if I didn't do this thing, it was success. What, what is it for you? Like, what makes, you can lay down at the end of the night and not be pissed off at yourself because you didn't succeed. What is that? It's, it's, it's funny. I was actually just talking to Parker about how, most of my deals are abnormally large. And he said that he's noticed they'll all come in at once. And he asked, why does that happen? Like you'll, you'll have deal after deal. Feast after or deal. famine. Yeah. It's because I'll go work and apply myself mm. within a short period of time. So all the deals are popping at the same time as well. And you know, the thing that I do differently during those days, it has nothing to do with a morning routine. When I wake up, anything like that. I mean, I, you got to, you got to feel good. You got to take care of your body. Exercising helps, obviously. Good diet, that sort of thing. But really, 99% of it is just applying yourself and focusing on your goal. Fixating on come up with an amount of money that you're going to make that day. An, an amount of premium is how I look at it. Like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write X amount of this and X amount of that. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to hit this ridiculously high goal that doesn't make sense that and then i'll actually hit the goal or i'll come close enough to where it's like wow i if i would have gotten that other deal that guy that didn't sign it then i would have actually made ten thousand dollars today you know that that sort of thing is is what separates the good days from from bad so i mean it's it's just motivating yourself because no one's telling you you have to do anything right right at this point managing myself is by far the hardest part. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. That's Even after nuts. all this time. But yeah. you're in the right business. I I was talking to Ben earlier, and he said, this is the only industry where 
you can legally decide you want to make 10000 in a couple days and actually go do it. Right. The opportunity's there. Right. You just have to crush it. Yeah. Wow. And he, you mentioned... Um, you mentioned earlier you thought you went out too soon on your own. Yeah. Any are there any regret any other regrets through the path of, of where you've gone? I actually wouldn't call that a regret. I uh I I'm glad now that I've gotten it over with and that I don't have to deal with that. I don't have to be, you know, sitting in my dad's garage calling cold calling people and calling leads that don't want to talk to me, trying to call previous customers that aren't gonna pay for anything else you know they're not gonna they're not even paying for what i initially sold them it's you know um the 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 biggest regret that i have is not uh applying myself for more days you know Mm -hmm. if you look at the amount of time that i've had since i've had this license and then the amount of money that i've made that money is typically made when i'm focused i'm hyper focused that day i really made all the money in that one for the week, like yeah. you could point to a day yeah. or two that, and I think most of us do that. It's very co- the people who I've met in this industry who make a lot of money brokering life insurance products, or whether they do that annuities, any kind of financial service type business in this sector of it anyway. The people will, um, it's almost like sprints. They'll they'll work really hard, make a lot of money, and then they'll take their foot off the gas. And my biggest regret is that I've spent too much time with my foot off the gas mm. because it really doesn't feel good to take your foot off the gas. Yeah. You know, maybe that sense of accomplishment is right. fulfilling, right? For a day, every, yeah, yeah, yeah. every week, you know, but you, it's like exercise. You start working out every day and then you try to not work out one day. It feels weird. It's not a, it's not a good feeling. Yeah. You know, it's the same thing with, with sales, with, with this job. If you're consistently getting sales every day, it's not going to feel good to go a day without getting sales. And is there something to be said about momentum? You yeah. know, like once you're in the zone yeah. and it's just, it's clicking. Yep. And then you stop, like the fat, well, you stop, you stop your exercise. The fat comes really fast. Right. And it's take a really fucking long time to get out. Yep. Same thing, right? You, you just interrupt that. Mo- so you've identified that. Now what do you do to correct it? So like you might see three days into the week, you're, you your mind is open enough to know that that's what's happening. Like, okay, I, I, I didn't fully commit on these days. What do you do to change it? Like, how do you switch? Don't think about the money. Don't rest on your laurels. Like, don't think about, you know, it's like we all have this bitch voice and then this boss voice, right? The bitch voice is going to tell you to take your foot off the gas. And the boss voice is going to tell you to floor it. So stop listening to the bitch voice <laughs> yeah. is essentially I've been, um, you know, the, the longer, the longer I've done this for the, the, obviously I've, it's gotten easier for me mm-hmm. and you get, you gain a book of business and then referrals start pouring in and you get new lead sources that work out really well, that sort of thing. But at the end of the day, the thing that makes it easier is my ability to understand that if with consistency, I'm, I'm always going to have way more money than what I need. You know, it, the, the lack of consistency comes from me focusing on the amount of money that I already have mm. and how I, I already have, I already have everything You're I good. need. Right. I can pay all my bills for X amount of time. I know I'm going to make way more money than that. Just within that period. It's that voice is what takes your foot off the gas. Yeah. And then you're at the sauna or the golf course or whatever. And really you should be in your office on the phone and you have to balance that right i mean you integrate because you have you have a family right you know you gotta you gotta divide your time divide and conquer so you've seen it though i mean that's the thing i always say with people that like go back to the diet when people go on a diet you know they don't get results in a week or two weeks and typically you know january 1st rolls around and by february 1st whatever that new year's resolution is done because yep. We expect just instant results nowadays. Everything is instant at our fingertips. And if you talk to someone that would that wants to be you, that wants to work with you, that wants your success, how do you how do you get them to understand ninety days is you'll see the results. Oh yeah. But you ain't gonna see it in the first week, right? Right. Like, how do you get them to what could you say? I mean, it's it's like when someone says Money doesn't buy you happiness. And they look at you and go, well, yeah, Mitch, but you have all the fucking money you need. It's easy right. for you to say that. Right. Because you've experienced it. Right. Well, how do I trust 
that that's going to come to fruition. That's the only way that it trusting it is the only way that it be, it does come to fruition. If you don't believe that it's going to work out, then it's not going to work out. So how there's a high turnover rate, like the, the people who try to do this job and fail far outnumber the people like me who actually make a, a turn it into a career, make a living out of mm -hmm. it. And, you know, but I have a new agent I've been working with and, you know, he doesn't have a sales background. He doesn't, which typically you would have some kind of a sales background to want to get into this industry. Right. Um, no sales background whatsoever, but he believes that it's going to work and it's already working so well. And it's, he's, it's, it's such a short timeline between knowing nothing about it. And now he's actually at the point where he's pretty good at it within, mm. uh, it's actually less than 90 days, mm. but it, for most people, I think you commit to 90 days. If, if you'll start if, to see the ball yeah, roll. Yeah. If they can do it, you can do it. Yeah. It's, it's just they knew they could do it because they saw somebody else doing it and said, if that person can do it, I can do it, mm. you know? How do you attract agents now? You're working with agents that, that, that want to replicate what you do. What's your attraction method to them? Is it referrals? Is it, you, you don't, are you pursuing it, not pursuing it? They're just kind of coming to you or how do you attract them? Yeah, I, I mean, the reality is our information's out there. It's public information. So it's very easy to go through and scrape data and, it's you, you, you don't want to just shotgun blast these people. For example, you know, if I'm going to go try to uh, get somebody a Forrester's contract or a Fidelity contract or whatever, I'm going to specifically target people who I already know are putting a lot of volume through that company mm. and maybe putting it through an IMO where they're they're, they're getting a uh, not much. For yeah, the yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. We could give them the full first year or, or you know. So all the value that you would add that they're not. getting. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's my philosophy is, you know, the sniper rifle approach where you're you're targeting. It's a strat strategic sale. Yeah. You're targeting somebody that you already know you're going to be able to help. And, um, you know, I mean, that's in terms of recruiting and wholesaling life insurance. I think that's the way to do it. That's all you're a fucking sniper in yeah. the life insurance industry. Yeah. Somebody tag that. That's how we're going to put it out. <laughs> <laughs> Mitch is the sniper. Bradley Cooper, right? <laughs> um, what What's the next step? Like, where do you go? Because you've 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 had your success. You're living a good life. Is is there something that's still on your bucket list, business wise, to make sure you check off or get to? What's your What's your next? How do you keep yourself motivated? What's the next? Yeah, my next level. My next set of goals. My next step involves helping other people get to my point, get to where I'm at. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, I can't imagine having a normal job and being able to go in, needing to go in and, you know, work for somebody else, build their dream. I, I almost feel like I don't have a job in a sense. Mm. And I, I want to share that with more people mm. because it, it really is an amazing thing. It totally changes your life to be able to have the freedom to, earn enough. It's not just about the amount of money we can make within a short period of time and the flexibility or for me, even about helping people, which is very important for me. Mm. You know, I'm not trying to screw up any of these people over. I'm, I'm trying to help everybody that I come in contact with. Mm. And I think, uh, taking people similarly to how, when I come across somebody who would have bought something that you know, I can get that person a way better deal on the same type of life insurance. It coming across somebody who, who would be working a, a nine to five job and just miserable, hating their life, waking, waiting for the weekend, showing that person the light in a sense mm. and, and teaching them, showing them how to, how to make money the way that I make money. Um, that's, that's my you, next set of And if you approach it like that, you will see your income oh, 10x. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if that's the approach is I got something that I can share that anybody can do, right? Yeah. We have already said if, if you got 100 bucks and, you know, a week worth of time to study, I can get you into it. Right. And all of a sudden I can show you financial freedom. I mean, the, the world's huge. your oyster, man. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. Um, all right. So personal note, let's put business aside. If this is the last thing that your family heard you say, what would you say? I love you. <laughs> Thank you for everything. Thank you for the, I'm so grateful for the time, you know, I've spent with you and 
at the end of the day, this could be the last thing they hear me say. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we never know what's going to happen. So anything could happen. The whole world could, you know, it's, uh, it's, I love you. That's it's, awesome. Yeah. Dude, you're real. You're a rock star. Thank you for uh, coming today. And uh, let's do it again. Me. Yeah. All right. Right on. Cheers. Appreciate it. Yep. yep. Acrylic Financial Incorporated is a registered investment advisor, and the opinions expressed by those on this show are their own and do not reflect the opinions of Acrylic Financial. All statements and opinions expressed are based upon information considered reliable, although it should not be relied upon as such. Any statements or opinions are subject to change without notice. Information presented is for educational purposes only and does not intend to make an offer or solicitation for the sale or purchase of any specific securities, investments, or investment strategies. Investments involve risk and unless otherwise stated are not guaranteed. Information expressed does not take into account your specific situation or objectives and is not intended as recommendations appropriate for any individual. Listeners are encouraged to seek advice from a qualified tax, legal, or investment advisor to determine whether any information presented may be suitable for their specific situation. Past performance is not indicative of future performance, and some guests may have been paid a fee to be interviewed for this show.